Prophet ﷺ told us, he gave all the diseases of the world in his final address. He said that the blood of Jahiliyyah is over. There's no more revenge in my religion. And he said the first blood he put down was Rabi'ah ibn al-Harith ibn Abd al-Muttalib, his own family. So if anybody was going to take vengeance, it would have been his family. He said no. And then he said, so this Jahili hatred, it, it has to end. And in our tradition, we have the ability, and uh, Dr. Al-Afifi, who's one of your muftis here, will confirm this. The Prophet ﷺ said that it was permitted for a Muslim to give security to anybody. He can give security to people, but these people don't know the Sunnah of the Prophet. If we give security, then they're supposed to honor that and let those people go. They don't do that anymore because they don't know the Sunnah. This woman who went on uh, television on YouTube to speak to these people that are holding her son hostage, she had a better understanding of Islam as a non-Muslim than these people in uh, in Iraq have. She said, "I studied your religion, and your religion says." that one soul is not held to account for what other souls do. And she said, my son's not responsible for what American foreign policy does. And then she said, and then I read that your Prophet Muhammad, he had amnesty and he, and he forgave people, so I'm asking for my son back. She said, I just want to hug him. Now, that's one woman, and I know that Muslims have untold suffering. I know that. If you look at what's happened to the Iraqi Muslims at the hands of, of, of these people, it's worse than all of the, the, the Christians, but they only talk about the Christians. I'm aware of that. I'm very aware of that. And it should all stop. But for me, the most important thing in this religion is the preservation of the honor of our Prophet when we harm each other, that's what we do amongst ourselves. But when we harm peoples from other religions and other cultures, it harms our religion. It harms our religion. And that's why it's so odious to me. All of it is bad. What the Jews in Israel have done to the Palestinians is, is heinous and condemnable. It's heinous and condemnable. But what Muslims who claim to be Muslims are doing to people in these places is, to me, more heinous. Because when an Israeli attacks a Muslim, it doesn't affect the religion of Islam. But when these people attack innocent people, it makes our Prophet people think that his religion was a cruel religion. And I want to end with a quote by Amir Abdul Qadir al Jazairi, one of the great Muslims of the 19th century who died in 1883. He said, When we think how few men of real religion there are, how small the numbers of defenders and champions of the truth when one sees ignorant persons imagining that the principles of Islam are hardness, severity, extravagance, and barbarity. It is time to repeat these words. Sabrun Jameel, Wallan Musta'an. Beautiful patience, and our help is with God. The final question now for the evening. Uh, this is from Muhammad Izwan, and indeed I believe this question will be uh, in fact, uh, you know, quite important and close to the hearts of many people here, not least uh, the government here, the law enforcement agencies, um, and so on and so forth. Um, dear Sheikh, uh, in my view, global tawbah means returning to the Islamic way of life in a global scale. It also means, perhaps, to return to the golden age of Islam, whereas the Islamic Caliphate are still in power in the world, with the abolishment of the caliphate in 1924, however, the world has been in an absence of the caliphate for about 90 years or so since the establishment of it by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, um, before Hijra, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had faced a society that had no that that was really, in his, in in my view, no different from the society in which we live today. Therefore. In my view, the, the global tawba or the restoration of Islamic Caliphate, I really think must start with the approach of the Prophet when he was uh, in Mecca. So could the failure to understand the movement to restore the Caliphate without understanding the approach that our Prophet used in Mecca have led to the failure to restore the Caliphate today? 
What is your opinion on the movement to restore the Islamic Caliphate that is happening today in Syria and Iraq, known, for example, in this country as ISIL or ISIS, or now sometimes just known as IS? Um, what is your view on this, uh, with, particularly with regards to the killing of uh, innocent people? And is it true that the Islamic Caliphate can only be restored with the emergence of Imam Mahdi in Mecca, since every Islamic Caliphate in, in history had, had access to the Hijaz? <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Well, first of all, uh, in, in a text that was taught, the imama is in aqidah traditionally, that's where they deal with it. If you read the books of aqidah, they usually deal with imama. It's one of the furu' of aqidah. Um, and Imam al has has extensive bahath on it. Um, Imam Tiramsani, uh, Ibn uh, Zakri, great scholar from Fez has a very nice um, bahath uh, research on that. Uh, Ibrahim al-Laqani, the great uh, Maliki scholar from Al-Azhar, whose text was taught for the last 400 and some odd years in, uh, in the Middle East, in sure. Al-Azhar in particular, he says, وَوَاجِبُ النَّصْبُ إِمَامَ الْعَدْرِي بِالشَّرْعِ فَعْلَمْ لَا بِحُكْمَ الْعَقْلِ وَلَيْسَ رُكْنًا يُعْتَقَدْ فِي الدِّينِ فَلَا تُزِيغْ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ الْمُبِينِ he says that to have a, an imam, meaning a ruler, that's traditionally what the, the ruler was called. He was called imam, because he's the leader. He said, and, ha, and it's an obligation to have an imam. And, and then he says, by the sharia, not by the aql. In other words, it's, a, it's a, a divine injunction and not a rational principle. Because the Mu'tazidite disagreed. They, they said it wasn't from sharia, it was a hukum aqli. So he said it's not a... A rational judgment, it's actually from the Sharia. But he said, but it is not a rukan of the religion. It's not a pillar of the religion. So don't go against the Imam who you have, whoever's your ruler. Because the Prophet in his bay'ah, he said, لا تنازع أهل الأمر في الأمر Don't go against the people put over you. أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم Obey Allah and obey the Messenger and obey those put over you. Now, can there be more than one Imam at any one time? That was an ikhtilaf issue. And the ulama differed. And they said uh, that there could be if the lands were far apart. Uh, the, 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 the khilafah never ended in Morocco. There, there's been an unbroken chain for the last over 400 years. Um, and the king has always been known there as Amir al-Mu'mineen. He's a Qurayshi Hashemaith. And they've always had that. They were not part of the Ottoman Empire. So the Moroccans have maintained their bay'ah with their king. Now the democratic uh, uh, movement, the revolutionary movements that came into the Muslim world overthrew a lot of the kings. Uh, in Libya they used to shout in the streets, Iblis wala Idris. Give us Iblis and not King Idris. And King Idris who was a very righteous man, they got rid of him and then Iblis came. And they had him for 40 years, and now they have Jahannam. <laughs> no, you know, so, <laughs> If you try to hasten something before it's time, then the Qaida Fiqhiya says that you, get, you, 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 you don't get the thing, you're deprived of it. Like a, somebody who kills their father, they don't inherit the money. They get the had punishment. So it's important to note that Islam does not need a khilafa, and that's a, that's agreed upon, mujma' alayh, and the proof of it is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari of Hudayfa, kana nas yasaroon an al-khayr, fa kuntu asawa an al-sharr mukhafata an yudrikani, people were asking about good, so I asked about evil, out of fear I would see it. And at the end of the hadith, Hudayfa says, what should I do? When, because he talks about there'd be these horrible people calling to hellfire, claiming to be from the Prophet. Du'atun ala abu ab nar Whoever answers them will get thrust into the hellfire. And these are these people now. And the Prophet Hudayfa said, what do I do? He said, ilzam jama'at al-muslimin wa imamuhum. Cling to the, the group and the imam. And he, Hudayfa was a genius. He said, wa in lam yakun lahum jama'atun wa la imam. What if there's no group and no imam? And he said, إِذَنْ اِعْتَزَلَ الفرق كلها. Then avoid all the sex and just be on your own. He didn't say, no, you have to establish the khilafah. It's a far kifaya, and if nobody's doing it, you have to do it. And that's in Sahih Bukhari. 
So don't be deluded by these people. You have good uh, governance here. There's problems. I'm not stupid. <laughs> you know, seriously, there's always going to be problems. Any government is going to have problems. But r relative to other places, you have good governance. Trust me, I've been all over the world. You have good governance. There, there needs to be more transparency. There needs to be all these things. That's true. And, and inshallah, كيف ما تكون عليكم. The more transparent you are, the more transparent Allah will make your rulers. So you need to rectify yourselves. But your rulers here, you have to obey them uh, unless they command you to ma'asiyah. That's the only time. And I am very traditional in this area because you see what revolutions do. Look at the result of revolutions. And this is why our ulama for centuries have been against revolutions. And that was before bombs, before uh, MiG jets, before F-16s before uh, missiles, they were against it because of bloodshed. What do the angels say when they say, mm. Are you going to put in the earth those who corrupt and shed blood? And in the hadith, in the ayah about Habil and Qabil, Cain and Abel, when, when he raises his hand, he said, I'm not going to raise my hand to kill you. Inni Allah Rabbil Alameen. I fear Allah. In the tafsirs, they say, Mujahid, who was one of the great students of Ibn Abbas, Tarjuman al-Quran, he says the first sharia was non-violence. It was prohibited to kill if somebody was going to kill you. Which means the foundation of human existence is non-violence. Mm -hmm. That it is a rukhsa to defend yourself. And in fact, Ibn Omar said it is permitted to let somebody kill you like Uthman, who could have defended himself, but he chose not to. Because he was following the hadith of the Prophet, if you can be the, the, the Abdullah being killed, rather than the Abdullah killing, then be that. And that's why he's a shaheed, he has that maqam. So this spreading of violence around this globe is a demonic thing. It's from Iblis because he hates us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abtalana bi iblis, but we know the tricks of iblis. Qad ya'isa iblisu as shaytanu an yu'bada fi jazirat al-Arab, walakinna tahrisha baynakum. He has despaired of being worshipped by Muslims, but he is content with showing, sowing dissension amongst you. Fa iyakum wa iyahu. Watch out, and watch out from him. The Egyptians have a nice saying, khalli barik min nafsik. You know. Take care of yourself. But if you translate it literally, it means empty your mind of your ego. <laughs> There's too much ego. Nafsi, nafsi. This is shaitan. Nafsi. Now everybody's taking selfies. Narcissistic people. You know, in the Emirates, in the Emirates, they've had several mortal fatalities, accident, car accidents from people taking selfies. They kill themselves driving. We had it in America. People taking selfies. One girl was listening to the happy song. You know this stupid song about happy like a house without a roof. I mean who the hell is going to be happy if they have a house without a roof. And, and so they're listening to this song and she tweets to her friend. Oh I'm so happy listening to the happy song. And she goes into the other lane and has a head on collision. That was the last thing she tweeted. Happy listening to the happy song. Now where is she? Not so happy. <laughs> you know, seriously. I mean, all these f cameras. I'm so sick of cameras. <laughs> I, really, I've ne I don't, my wife's here and she knows. I don't take pictures. This is my camera. I can see all of you. If I close my eyes, I see my teachers. Mm. Wallahi, I see them in my heart. I don't need a camera. I never take pictures. People say, can I take a picture? I don't want take a picture right here. Just be here. Be present. <laughs> don't, don't think about tomorrow. You might not see tomorrow. Be present. This camera is destroying us. Really, all these stupid selfies. You know, I mean, people putting, oh, I had, I had, uh, I had uh, spinach and quiche for lunch, look, and put it online and show everybody what you had for lunch. Next, why don't you take what, what goes into the toilet? Why don't you take the picture there and show them, oh look, it came out the other end. You know, seriously, what, what, are, what happened to us? Allah. What's happened to us? So now I'm giving ideas, now they'll start doing that, right? Yeah. Something new. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Ishtihad of Shi Hamza here. <laughs> Thank you, mashallah.
Well, shit. Inshallah. <laughs> Allah, Allah mustaan. Well, indeed, that was a very important question because um, uh, indeed it, it's quite sad and very shameful really for us, for Malaysians, when we found out that a number of our own people actually had ended up being, for example, in Iraq and, and Syria who had participated in, in that. Yes, which is, which is why it, it's a, it's a it's great shock. And, you know, look, some of these people, I'm not going to deny their sincerity. There's people... They, they, they're zealous, they, they want uh, good for Islam, mm. that's true, but ikhlas is not enough. Absolutely. You can't be mukhlis. Even Qaim al Jawziya says there, there's mukhlisun in other religions. Mm. You have to be mukhlis with, with huda, with guidance. And that's called mukhlas. Mm. There's mukhlisun in the Quran and mukhlasun. The Allah has the two words. One is the passive, mm. where they have tawfiq from Allah, mm. and the other is the active. And mm. you need both. Uh, and so, really, you're, and look, the pro, you ha, jihad is prohibited without your parents' permission. Mm. It's prohibited. And, and if they go without, and you need to teach your children that. that and the Prophet, a, man came, a young man came to the Prophet asking permission to go on a military expedition. He said, are your parents alive? And he said, yes. He said, fafihima fajahid. Do jihad taking care of your parents. Go build a hospital. Become a doctor. Heal people. Go serve the, the, the orang asli. Hmm. Go, go help the orang. The Christians are going and converting them. Because nobody has, nobody's going and serving them. Go serve them. Take care of them. They're nice people. Hmm. Hmm. Really. Go protect the orangutan. Uh. You know, they're endangered species. <laughs> they'll, 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 really, they'll testify for you on Yom Al-Qiyamah. You know? uh, <laughs> because these poor animals, what did they do to deserve us? They're just being animals, but we're not being humans. What did they do to deserve us? Allah. Wallahi, what did the fish do to deserve us? Allah. Allah. The Prophet said in a hadith, al mustarihu wal mustarahu minhu, mm. in Sahih Bukhari, he said, the one who has rest and the one who others have rest from him. And they asked him, who are those, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, al mustarihu astaraha min nasib al-dunya ila rahmatillah. The, 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 mustari, the mustarih is the one who he dies and he's done with the fatigue of this world to the mercy of God. Allah. Like a righteous person. He said al-mu'min uh, who goes to the... And then he said that the mustarahu minu was al-abd al-fajir. Al-ladhi idha mat yastarihu minhu al-ibad wal-bilad wal-shajar wal-dawab aw kama qal. When he dies, the bad person, when he dies, the servants get repose from him. The lands get repose from him. Trees, oceans, rivers. The animals get repose from him. The Prophet said the animals get repose from him. You know, so we want to be the mustarih, not the mustarahu minhum. We want to be the one who gets repose when we leave this world, not the one that the world gets repose from us because we're gone and stop doing our fasad. Jazakumullah mm. khairan. Wallahi, um, saya sayang kamu semua. Saya sayang semua. What he said. Wahibbukum. <laughs> Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah bless all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect your land. May Allah protect your land. May He protect the, 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 all the people of this land. You know, I want to say, I'll finish with one thing. Islam, the great genius of our religion, and, and, and one of the great truths of our Prophet is that he came as a mercy to everyone. Mm. And, and this is why he created multi-ethnic, multicultural societies. He had all types of people. He had Persians, he had Romans, he had Africans, he had Arabs, he had all the different Arab tribes, and he brought them into a, a fraternity of Rahmah. And, and, and he had Jews and Christians, and he honored them and treated them. When the Jews of the Christians of Najran came, he honored them in his mosque. He spoke to them kindly. Allah said, mm. Speak to them in a beautiful way. He was not a harsh person, he was a gentle person. But he, he created an open society, obviously with limits, because we have uh, akhlaq. Mm. But one of the great beauties of this place is that you have Chinese people, yes. you have Indian people, you have Malay people, you have Orang Asri, all these mm -hmm. different people mm -hmm. living together mm -hmm. 
and, 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 and you're all part of this beautiful culture of Malaysia. May Allah keep that here and preserve in you the tolerance of Islam. Our religion is a tolerant religion. It honors other people. It treats them with dignity as human beings. We have ennobled and dignified all of the children of Adam. If they're in an Adamic form, they have the dignity of Bani Adam. And so they should be honored just for that dignity. And every, uh, every person is a potential believer. And so leave the door open for everybody. We welcome people. Marhaban. What come in? Come. Like like Maulana Rumi said, I just came from Qunya. He said, Come again, come again. A thousand times come again. Mm. Idolater, Hindu, Christian, mm. Buddhist, Muslim, come again. If you've broken your vow a thousand times, come again. Mm. Ours is not a caravan of Allah. despair. Mm. You know, come again. Just come back to Allah. Make tawbah to Allah. Tubu it Allah. Our Lord has a door that's always open. It's the door of tawbah. The, the people in disbelief make a tawbah from their shirk or their ilhad. The people of belief make a tawbah if they're from Ahl al-Kaba'ir, from the Kaba'ir. If they're from Ahl al-Sagha'ir, from the Sagha'ir, from the lesser sins. If they're from the people of righteousness, from their extravagance. If they're from the highest people, from any heedlessness that occurred to their minds. Tawbah is always open. May Allah make us people of Tawbah. May He bless your community. May He bless your, your rulers, your ministers, the, the postal workers, all of the people that are keeping your streets clean. May He bless all the people. May He protect the people on the roads. Inshallah, may He alleviate your traffic problem. I hope that happens. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.